Hey guys, it's Henry here, and today we will be discussing Megalodon and if it persists into the present day. Which, if you want a short answer, no. No it does not. The species died out around 2 million years ago, and there is a practically zero, if any, chance that a population of these giants still survives today. But hey, if you want a longer and more interesting answer, I recommend watching the rest of this video where I will be clearing up the persistent myths on why these giants are truly extinct and hopefully putting these debates behind us so that we can all move on from this big fish. Let's begin. When people discuss Megalodon's present day existence, potential sightings are always something that comes up. But, as all of you may know by now, Sightings are not to always be trusted, and ulterior motives and misinterpretation is always something that needs to be looked at when discussing this topic. Sightings of Megalodon are plentiful and have been recorded at a worldwide level, with sightings coming from the coast of Australia to the middle of the Atlantic. I'll be going over one of these sightings that many see as irrefutable proof of the shark still being alive, and while yes, there are many other sightings out there, I will only be focusing on this one since there are simply too many to discuss and analyse all in one video, and I do not want it to be too dragged out. But without further ado, let's get into this. This sighting comes from the South Pacific, where an angler by the name of Zane Gray claimed to have had an experience with a massive shark that he and others believe could have been a living megalodon. Grey claimed to have seen one of the man-eating monsters of the South Pacific, a shark much longer than his 30 to 40 foot boat. Appearance-wise, Grey claimed the shark was yellow and green, with a square head, immense pectoral fins, and a few white spots. Grey did in fact see a large shark on that day, but not the shark he was claiming it to be. If you know anything about sharks and their classification, what Grey described sounds remarkably similar to a shark that is still known to currently swim the open oceans. Not Megalodon, but a big shark nonetheless. It is more than likely that Grey had an encounter with a whale shark, and a big one at that, as he deemed it as big, if not bigger, than his boat, which could have been just an over-exaggeration on his part. Whale sharks can most definitely reach up to 12 metres in length, and this remains consistent with Gray's sighting. His description of the animal lines up well with living whale sharks as well, as these animals not only sport greenish coloration, square shaped heads and large pectoral fins, they also possess the white spots that Gray had seen on the day. In conclusion, Gray simply misunderstood what he saw and interpreted his sighting as a different animal. There are a multitude of other sightings out there that I could discuss, but it would simply take too long to simply discuss sightings that are all relatively similar and are all most likely just exaggerations, misinterpretation, or just plain fraud. There is a clip from Ralph the Movie Maker that I feel explains more than I could in the same space of time, and I'll let you guys watch it to see what I'm getting at. So here are the options. One, she's lying. Two, she thought she saw Bigfoot, but she has like cataracts or something and it was just a deer. Or three, she was one of the only people on planet Earth to find Bigfoot, this creature that has never been seen or documented or had a picture taken of him. And there's never been like fossils or, or any kind of fecal matter or any proof that he's ever existed. Like Ralph said in the video, the chances of a group of people spotting a massive shark are extremely unlikely, and based on the vast amount of sightings that we have amassed over time that describe a large predatory shark still being in existence, it is extremely likely that we would have already found evidence of Megalodon still being out there if these sightings were actually true. If so many people continually saw this animal being a thing, it is very likely that science would have already described this animal beforehand if it really was so numerous, and sightings like this, and this, would be common. Simply by using Occam's razor, it is more than likely for the sharks to have been long since extinct than for them to somehow survive in large enough numbers in the present to still be a functioning part of an ecosystem. 
but even if the sightings are fabricated or just misinformed, they could just be su surviving in deeper waters, right? Only around 5% of the ocean has actually been explored, so there must be something down there, right? For our next segment, I will be discussing this very idea and seeing how well this idea of deep sea megalodon actually holds up. The issue with the argument of megalodons simply migrating to deeper waters is relatively flimsy once you look at where and when the animal had actually existed. Whilst the megalodon as a whole had a cosmopolitan range, most of the teeth that have been recovered and identified as belonging to megalodon have been found in regions that at the time of megalodon's existence were tropical slash subtropical and shallower waters where most of its prey was abundant rather than in the open ocean. Overall, ocean temperatures were warmer than today, allowing this animal to readily sustain itself on the bountiful amount of cetaceans and other animals that were thriving in the Miocene slash Pliocene ecosystems, allowing Megalodon as a whole to be wildly successful on a global scale due to this. Megalodon young thrived in warm and shallow coastal waters, which kept them safe from predators during their more vulnerable years, allowing them to grow to a big enough size to then move out into deeper waters, where they were then able to access the abundant sources of prey like whales and turtles for them to feed on. The main hypothesis for its extinction was that the oncoming ice age, called global ocean temperatures, with its prey moving away to colder regions, being unable to follow the cetacean prey to regions like the Arctic and the cooler European regions, meant that the giants were then subsequently starved to death, unable to find enough energy to fuel their massive bodies. And with most of their warm coastal environments gone, juvenile megalodon were now more vulnerable than ever to other predators like killer whales and hammerhead sharks, with their nurseries now almost absent, more than likely taking a toll on their population as a whole. Megalodon's existence as a shallow water predator means that we would have been bound to have documented at least some instances of these massive sharks preying on whales or other marine organisms, and there have also been no fresh carcasses found that have the bite marks so distinct to Megalodon on them, and the fact that we lack such documentations means a lot for this discussion. For the ocean being 95% unexplored, this fact falls apart once you realise that the 5% of the ocean we have mapped out is surface waters, where a majority of all biodiversity in the oceans actually live in. As the depths descend into more inhospitable conditions, the less life can actually survive down there, meaning the animals that do survive down there are incredibly specialised and possess many strange features that allow them to survive at such harsh conditions. There is in no way that in a such a short space of time that Megalodon could suddenly change their niche from a large apex predator to abyss dwelling in only a few thousand years. This is simply not how evolution works, and Megalodon was simply too specialised for their specific niche to, to so drastically change their way of life. And even if they were down in places like the Mariana Trench, they wouldn't have nearly enough to eat. Animals as big as Megalodon need enormous quantities of food to survive on a daily basis, and down at depths like the Mariana's Trench, it would barely get enough to survive, so even if they could make the change, they would have further starved looking for food anyway. The larger and more specialised for a certain niche an animal is, the harder it is for it to adapt to environmental changes in the case of Megalodon. It is extremely unlikely that such a stressful time for the species could have resulted in them adapting for a deep sea existence in such a short period of time. For Megalodon to still be surviving at depths like these go against everything we actually know about their behaviour and lifestyle in their ecosystems, and it simply doesn't make a whole lot of sense once you thoroughly begin to look into it. What about the other large ocean-going animals that have remained elusive up until this time like the Megamouth and the Coelacanth? The issue with looking towards these species for evidence of Megalodon's existence is due to these animals having completely different niches compared to Megalodon itself. Coelacanths and Megamouths are very slow animals that mainly drift around the ocean either filtering in small organisms like krill in the case of the Megamouth, or ambushing slow-moving fish like the Coelacanth. Megalodon was a fast and active predator, and to compare it to animals that share none of its characteristics 
completely goes against what we actually know about it. Using the 95% unexplored excuse simply doesn't cut it when looking at the evidence, if you couldn't already gather. There are also other miscellaneous points that people bring up to provide evidence to a potentially surviving population of Megalodon. For example, teeth being dredged up from the seabed by a shipping vessel being attributed to surviving sharks that had only lost these teeth a short while ago. This turned out to be a misconception, however, as the teeth were covered in a mineral known as manganese dioxide, which precipitates over the water over many thousands of years. Once teeth specimens are cleaned and the mineral is washed away, the underlying quality of the preservation is, su is to such a high degree that the teeth look as if they have been dropped by a large shark at a recent date. However, this is most certainly not the truth. These teeth were dated to be around 11,000 through 24,000 years old, a much shorter frame of time to pair into the commonly accepted notion of the shark's extinction 2.6 million years ago. However, the fluctuations in the actual layering of manganese dioxide makes this method of dating completely unreliable, and other chemicals which mix with the minerals also heavily alters the true age of the megalodon teeth. As well as this, video footage of already known sharks are compiled into the megalodon sighting category without these people doing any prior research into the animals beforehand, and fake documentaries are another thing that people look into, even though it's all complete BS. Don't get me wrong, however, it is not bad at all to imagine an extinct animal surviving into modern times, but it only becomes misleading and honestly stupid to bring up cherry-picked sources as evidence when they are already so flimsy and untrustworthy. There is no harm in thinking of alternate realities, but putting these ideas into our actual reality is something that is harmfully misleading, and it is not something that should be encouraged. The sharks are dead, and while they must have been spectacles of the ocean, don't forget that the ocean is already teeming with beautiful and bizarre animals, and having Megalodon alive or not certainly doesn't detract from that. And on that note, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry I couldn't get out for Shark Week, but hey, life happens I guess. I'll see you guys in the next video, and I can't wait to bring you more exciting science content in the future. Until then, I'll see you guys later.